Perhaps Miracle Max from The Princess Bride said it best. Mostly dead is slightly alive. Well, now a scientific breakthrough is raising questions about just how alive a dead cell can be. Researchers at Yale used a new technology to reanimate some of the organs of pigs that had just died. The experimental process suggests there could be some cellular functions after death and that they might be reversible. The possibilities of this could be huge. It could help people survive longer after cardiac arrest or a stroke, or it could revolutionize organ transplants. On the other hand, isn't this how, like, every zombie movie starts? A mind-blowing discovery and unintended consequences? What are we actually dealing with? And what should we do with it? Let's get into all of that with Brendan Parent, Director of Transplant Ethics and Policy Research at the NYU Grossman School of Medicine. He provided commentary on this experiment for the journal Nature. Professor Parent, welcome. Good to be with you. Good to have you with us. Thanks so much. Great to be here. Before we get into the ethical questions, let's explain the experiments a little more. It used a technology called Organ X, which involves trying to get some dead cells, dead organs, dead tissues to kind of restore some of their functions. What does Organ X do? You got it. Organ X takes a blood like substitute and is hooked up to the veins and arteries of a pig that has been dead for an hour and gets that blood substitute flowing in a way that does better than blood itself. It has a cocktail of pharmaceutical agents. It has a pulse control and actually manages to circulate this blood-like substance through the body to get the organs revitalized. Now, this is different from existing technologies, one called ECMO, extracorporeal membrane oxygenation, which is what some hospitals may use to try to supply oxygen and remove carbon dioxide from the body. How different were the results between ECMO and Organax? Significantly, and I'll call it ECMO for simplicity, the Organax technology demonstrated far better capacity to get this blood stuff to all of the relevant places, to get those organs revitalized. It actually managed to reverse processes of cellular death that we haven't seen reversed before. I want you to level set for me, if you would. I know I, I referred to zombie movies and Resident Evil and all that, but I don't want to deal in too much hyperbole with, with this. What are we actually talking about? We, we're not talking about a process that brought the pig back to life, per se. There was some reanimation, but not revival of the dead pigs, right? You got it. Thank you for the responsible journalism. You're absolutely right. This is not big zombies. This is a restoration of cellular function that shows these organs are going to do better, potentially, in a transplant context, right? In order for a whole organism to function, you have to see a lot more than cellular restoration on a micro scale. Now, these may not be the zombie pigs, and, you know, I know that's a, a goofy image to deal with, but there are some real ethical questions, particularly the line between life and death. There are legal questions that involve when someone is declared dead, what can happen to somebody after they have been declared legally dead versus when they are yet alive. Walk us through a little bit of the ethical minefield that this kind of technology might lay if it continues to develop. Right. And that's the important point, which is if it continues to develop, right, we have to remember this is one study with a few pigs for a few hours that shows some restoration of function, right? But if this goes where it should go, because we want to try to save people's lives, right, we then might need to question as we did with the development of the ventilator to get lung function going, as we did with bypass to get heart going again, as we did with ECMO to get heart and lung functioning in consequence, we might have to shift the goalposts for when we decide a person who has lost blood flow is no longer returnable or dead, dare I say. 
It's funny we're talking about this today because today is my grandmother's birthday. Inez King in West Palm Beach, Florida. She is 104 today. Little old lady, but she's all there. She's the orneriest one out of everybody. And we are all very blessed to have her. And Angel, if you're watching, I love you. Happy birthday. But people are living longer all the time. Where do you see our efforts to extend longevity to cheat death going from here, beyond this Organ X experiment, for people who believe that 104 should be status quo and not unusual? Well, first of all, happy, happy birthday to her. Um, that's a remarkable achievement. Uh, I think the most important application of this technology is a matter of baby steps, right? What we want to do is to see how it will perform in the clinic against the current benchmark of ECMO in situations where ECMO might help people, right? Even with the data that we have, it's not entirely clear all the time whether ECMO will actually restore meaningful qualities of life. And sometimes we get these really unfortunate situations where someone has some function returned, but they can never come off of the machines. And we want to avoid that at all costs, right? The other application of this technology potentially is to preserve organs or transplant in individuals for whom there is no chance of meaningful recovery, right? If organ X cannot bring someone back, and we know that because they've lost blood flow for too long, if there's capacity to say, okay, we can't bring your loved one back, but we might be able to restore organs for transplant in a way that could save countless lives, we should do that. Now, we cannot be right. thinking about this as a Lazarus machine, right? We're not going to take right, people right. who have been dead or people who, you know, are about to be buried or in, you know, this isn't going to get people to the 120 or yeah. 140 year mark, right? We still have to accept the limited right, right, nature right. of yep. lifespan. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.